this hard. Piecewise graphs. I'm going to try to make it easy for you. Some people find this hard. But if you understand how to graph a line slope intercept form, we should be pretty good. If you've had a little trouble with that, you need to brush up on it, please. This looks crazy. All right? It's not, though. So I want to break it down for you. Remember, f of x stands for the output values, which are the dependent variable, which means you plug in things for x to get out. What are the other values? So when you plot a point, guys, you put in x values to get out y values. You need to remember that function, this f of x notation, is just like y. Okay? The function of the values of x, this has got two pieces to it, though. So let's separate the pieces out. One of the, the first equation is saying y equals 3 times x minus 1, and that's if x, for all values of x that are less than or equal to 4, meaning you're only going to plug in stuff less than or equal to 4. So it's a piece of a line. Right? The other part of the function is the second part, y equals 2x plus 7, and if you were graphing it, it would be another piece of a line, but of a different line. Okay. This notation is saying you have restrictions on what points you can put into the first equation versus the second, and you need to know which one to use. So if I want to do the x when x is 10, which one would I be using? You have to know how to read this. <laughs> All right, if you're not reading this right yet, you need to get onto that. If it's pointing a variables on the left and it's pointing left, that's less than. If it's variables on the left and it's pointing right, that means greater than. You can put in 10 for the one that says x is greater than 4. That tells me I'm going to use the second equation. So I would be doing 2 times 10 plus 7 to evaluate when x is 10. That'd be 27. Number 2, we're going to go a lot quicker now. Negative 1 third is the value that is less than or equal to 4, smaller than. So you use the first equation. So we would need to evaluate 3 times negative 1 third minus 1. 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. The second one, I mean third one, 3 says when x is 4, evaluate the function f of x. So the f of 4 would be, and that's another thing I ought to bring up, it could say something like f of 4. You're going to plug in 4 into the first equation because that's the one that includes 4 with the bar underneath. So we would be doing 3 times 4 um, minus 1. That would be 12 minus 1, which is 11. X being negative 2 would satisfy the first inequality. X is less than or equal to 4. We have to plug in the first one again. 3 times negative 2 minus 1 would be negative 6 minus 1, which is negative 7. And the fifth one. 5.2 is greater than 4, so you must use the second equation. So we'd be doing 2 times 5.2 plus 7. That's 10.4 plus 7, so that's 17.4. Okay, next section. More practice, so I want you guys to evaluate these. Note that there are three separate functions listed here, and you have to read and understand which is which. F of x, uh, this is saying that f of x is 3 for all values of x less than or equal to 0. So that's like y equals 3. The second part would be y equals 2, and that's at y values are 2 whenever x is greater than 0. So I'm going to evaluate 2, and then you're going to evaluate 2. The f of 2 would be a value that is bigger than 0, so you would use the second one, and so that would be the answer of 2. <coughs> if you were graphing these, they would be um, horizontal lines. The f of negative 4, the value negative 4 is smaller than 0, so you would get 3. Okay, do, do 3 and 4, please. Okay, probably should be done because those were really quick ones. Uh, you should have gotten for number 3, 3, and number 4, 2. Any questions on those for not understanding which one to use? All right, the second line is about the g function. So those next four questions are about the second function in the middle. 
The restrictions on that function are, if the values of x are less than or equal to 3, use the first equation. If they're greater than 3, use the second. So the g is 7. 7 is greater than 3, so you'd put it in the second one. 2 times 7 minus 1, that's 14 minus 1, which is 13. Could it rain any more? Oh, sorry, it started raining. <laughs> I'm just sick of the rain. Uh, g of 0. I don't care if that's my recording. Um, value of 0 is less than 3. So you're going to use the first equation, so you'd be doing 0 plus 5 and get 5. Okay, please do 7 and 8. Okay, probably got those done. Uh, should have four for number seven and eight for number eight. Yes? All right, H function, the second, the next line, all of these you're evaluating the last function here. Okay, so let's see how we can do with that. If uh, your value is less than or equal to negative two, which the first one is, negative four, it's less than or equal to negative two, we'll use the first equation. So we'll be doing 1 half of negative 4 minus 4. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 minus 4 would be negative 6. Value for the next one says h is negative 2. You have to check which one's including the, that value, and that would be the first one. So we'd be doing a half of negative 2. My pen stuck. Half of negative 2 minus 4. So that would be negative 1 minus 4, negative 5. All right, you do number 11 and 12, please. Okay, did you get 5 for 11? That's when people usually miss. And negative 9 for 12. I needed to talk about 11 in my other hour, so I, maybe just real quick in case somebody missed that one. Negative 1, it's really tempting to quick pick the wrong function. Negative 1 is actually bigger than negative 2, right? So you should have done 3 times, oops, 3 minus 2 times negative 1, which is 3 plus 2, 5. Okay, now we're going to graph. All right, so the first equation, if you'd like to look at it this way, y equals 2 times x minus 1. And that says for values of x, oops, I don't want to cover up that symbol. Values of x, so I'm going to grab a highlighter, that are less than or equal to 1. Okay, less than the other piece says greater than 1, if x is greater than 1. So you're graphing one line if x is less than 1 or equal to, and you're graphing another line if it's greater than 1. So I'm going to put in a boundary on my graph, the 1. You always want to look over here at the inequalities and see the 1. Okay, so I'm going to draw in 1. It's what's separating the two pieces of the graph. I right, kind of did that crooked. Can't really, oh well, good enough. So I'm going to graph these two things separately. So I'm going to look at the first one, and I'll make a little t-chart. And see the value that's right here where the inequality, that 1? You must plug that in to both of the equations. So I'm going to plug in 1. That'd be 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. 1, 1 is a point on the graph. Because it says x less than or equal to 1, I know that this point is inclusive on that graph, so it should be a solid dot at that point. I'm going to put another number in that's less than 1, 0. If I put in 0 in the equation, I get negative 1. I'm going to put in uh, something smaller than 0, negative 1. If I put in negative 1, I'll get negative 3. Okay, now these are points that are on that line. This is a line. So 1, 1, I'm going to plot, solid dot, 0, negative 1, 
and negative 1, negative 3. Now, this line had a slope of 2. If you remember y equals m times x plus b form, the m is 2, the y-intercept is negative 1. Well, we do have it crossing at negative 1. Up to right 1 is the slope, so we could go and reverse it. We can't go past this line, though, because these are values that are bigger okay, than 1. We only can do ones that are less, so that's why it's a piece of the line on this side. Okay, so if we were doing up to right 1, we can go and reverse down to left 1 and get some more points without plugging them in. And then you graph that piece of a line and you stop when you hit the boundary, which is that uh, what I highlighted. You didn't have to highlight it, but I missed my points, so I'm trying to fix it. My points were, it was a little sloppy. All right, put an arrow on the one end. It stops there. The second line, we're going to make a t-chart. And now we're supposed to be following for values that are bigger than one. but you need to know what happens at the boundary. So you are going to plug in your boundary number of 1 into the equation. 3 times 1 plus 1 would be 3 plus 1 or 4. Now, because that is not including 1 in its inequality, we're going to put an open dot. You see why I wrote open? I'm saying open circle. So at 1, 4, we would have an open hole. And then I'm going to pick a number bigger than 1, 2, plug it in. That would be two times, uh, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 would be 7. So two sevens on the graph. And this thing had a slope of 3, which is going up 1, 2, 3, right 1, up 1, 2, 3, right 1. This is the other piece of the graph. Did your first piecewise function. It is a function because there are no overlaps in the graph. Any vertical line will only hit one point. This point has its fill in right there. This is open, okay? So it is a function. The domain would be negative infinity to infinity. All right, let's try another one. First graph. This is our restriction of x less than 1, x greater than 1. That's my boundary number is 1 again. So I'm going to highlight 1 again. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm going to separate the two graphs. I'm going to do the first one and make a little t-chart. I'm thinking about values of x that are less than 1, but first, very first step, put the 1 in. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. Ew. I'm going to leave it alone for a minute. I'm going to put in some other stuff. For less than 1, 0 would work. That would give me a 0. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to put in negative 2 because i got to take half of it. Half of negative 2 would be negative 1. So these are points on this line. <clears throat> now wait, what about this first one? We plugged in 1. Should we have an open or a solid dot? Open because there's no bar under there. So this is your open dot. Kind of hard to graph 1, 1 half, especially on this little grid. But I'll make an open. Oh, that did not come out well. Let me go back. Right. Oh, don't want an eraser. Open dot at one one half, and then I'll plot zero zero, and negative two negative one, and then I'm going to start playing with the slope because the slope's one half, up one right one. The opposite of that's down one left one because i got to stay to the left of that boundary. Okay, that's the piece of the line. Stop when you get to the open hole, but it does connect from 0, 0 to that open hole. That's why you have to have that boundary, um, that open hole on your graph. Otherwise, you would miss part of the graph. All right, second piece of the graph for values of x greater than or equal to 1. Put in 1 first. You get negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. Put in 2, you get negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Put in 3, you get 0. And then let's go graphing. 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 0. This one's coming down because its slope is negative 1. Down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, 
and we can keep going. So that's that piece of the graph. All right, you got to flip your page, go to the back on 2B or not 2B. <clears throat> we have a different boundary this time. Yay, three. Hot pink for my friend who likes hot pink. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is the, again, we're going to plug in three. So I'm going to make my T chart for the first equation. I'm going to put three in. Three plus two is five. Bless you. I need to do numbers bigger than three. That says X is greater than three. So I'll try four and I get six. You can keep going if you like. I'm going to start plotting. This is where the open hole is because it doesn't says greater than only and not including. So at 3, 5, we have an open hole. At 4, 6, we have another point. And that's because the slope on that thing is 1. So we can go up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. And there's that chunk of the graph. Good luck. All right, second piece of the line. I like to change colors just to see the difference between the two. This one is inclusive of 3, but all the numbers below 3 and including 3. So starting with 3, 3 minus 3 would be 0. Got to get smaller. 2. 2 minus 3, negative 1. Let's just go for plot. 3, 0. Oh, and this one's got a solid dot at 3, 0. 2, negative 1. Well, the slope is 1. That's up 1, right 1, but we can't go past the pink line, so we have to go in reverse. Down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. Notice that I'm hitting my y-intercept. I'm going to bring that up because you could have to write an equation for a picture. So this is the piece of the graph for the second line. See how the y-intercept here was negative 3? Matches the equation. Okay. How could you figure out if the y-intercept was right on this one? Up one, right one, up one, right one, down one, left one, down one, left one, down one, left one. Oh, bang. I hit 2. Okay. So it does match the equation in slope-intercept form. So what if you were given this picture? Could you write the graph? We're going to find out because we are going to have problems like that. All right, let's go for 16 first. Another example, piecewise. Oh, our boundary is back to 1 again. How exciting. You know, it could be 0, it could be anything. I think we got, oh, that was a terrible line. Good enough. Thought I'd try purple this time. Here is... First graph, it says for values of x less than or equal to 1. So if I put in 1, I get 2. If I put in 2, I'd get 4. Uh-oh, less than 1, Heimer. Oops, gone the wrong direction. Careful. Less than or equal to 1. So I put in 1, I got 2. That's going to be a solid dot. If I put in 0, I would get 0. If I put in negative 1, I would get negative 2. So 1, 2 is a solid dot right on the boundary line. Then you go to 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and you can start doing the slope of 2, which is up to right 1 or reversed down to left 1. Make your chunk of line. Put an arrow on the end. Okay. And then this piece, at values of x greater than 1, but I got to put 1 in so I know where my open dot will be. That would be 1 half times 1. 1 half plus 2 is 2 and a half. 
I'm going to go ahead and put something else in there. For values of x greater than 1, let's do 2. Half of 2 is 1. You'd get 3 then if you added 2 to it. Maybe I'll put in 4. Half of 4 would be 2. 2 plus 2 would be 4. So this is really awkward to graph because it's really hard to squeeze this in there, isn't it? At 1, 2 and a half, oh my gosh, that's just above there, isn't it? What number is this one? Is 16. Yep, that's where it is. Uh, 2, 3, and 4, 4. Okay, the slope was one half for that line. So up one right two, up one right two, we could get some more points. And now we got a really good picture of that graph. Always got to make sure you go all the way to the open hole connected. Okay, because there's points in between the ones that we've plugged in. All right, number 17, new boundary, zero. That is your y-axis. Okay. T-chart for the first set. This is where my solid dot would be. I got a plug in zero, and I get three. Values of x less than or equal, that's a solid dot then. Smaller than zero, negative one, would give me, if I plugged in, gives me two. And negative 2, if I plugged in, would give me 1. So 0, 3 on the y-axis, solid dot, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 1. This slope is 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, or down 1, left 1. So let's get some more points. All I'm doing is using the slope backwards. And then draw in that line and stop at the boundary. Second piece, do a t-chart, plug in zero. zero. Two times zero is zero. This is where you're going to have an open hole. And if you ever feel like, feel like you can't tell if it's open or not, you can just write open on it on your graph or something. I, it's hard to see. Okay, so 0, 0, we got an open hole, and then we got to put in numbers larger than 0. So that would be 1, 2 would be on the graph. And then you could start using your slope if you want. It's up to right 1. Or you can plug more numbers in. That's up to you. And then graph your piece of your line. I kind of missed my points, didn't I? Oh, no. Why did it do that? It erased more than I wanted it to erase. Uh, hit them a little bit better, not much. All right, last uh, graphing example, and then we're going to write the equation on one. Okay, I'm going to pause and let you give this one a shot. Okay, if you're done, if not, keep going. Did you find something weird out? It filled it in, didn't it? The second one fills it in. Fills in the open hole. Are we good? 
Anybody need any help with that? Okay, why did it fill in? Well, because you get the same value when you plug in two. So one of them includes it, the other one didn't. It's the red one on my graph that included it. All right, well, I want to write a piecewise function for this graph. All right, so all of these started with the big old bracket. Looks kind of like a face. So we need the boundary amount which is good to go look at right away. I see negative three, right? Okay, so I know something about negative three is my boundary. So that means, let's go for the right side first. This line right here, we can find its y-intercept and its slope. This line is the right side where the values of x will be greater than, right? They're higher than negative three. So greater than negative three, but does it is it solid dot? Well, it is a solid dot. So that means we'll put the bar under here to include it. The other piece will not be, it will be the left side of the graph, and it's going to be for values of x that are less than negative three. Are you with me on that part, I hope. Okay, now I'm going to go write the equation of this line. Where's the y-intercept? It looks like it's at three and a half, right? Which can be written three times two plus one, seven halves. That's your y-intercept, okay? In the y equals mx plus b form. Remember, f of x is the y. We need to now find the slope. So let's count from one point to the next. If you climb from this point to the next, nice point, you would go up one, right, two. So the slope of that line is one half. So we're ready to write the equation of that line. Y is the f of x part. We have one half x slope times x plus my y intercept, which is seven halves. So far, so good. That first one, we could see the y intercept. Can't see it on the next one. We're going to have to figure it out. Okay. So let's figure out the slope first. If you go from this point to this point to this point, you're going up one, right one, up one, right one. Right? Okay, so that would mean m is one. Now, if we can find that, we can go continue on because we know the slope. We can continue on from the open hole, up one, right one, up one, right one. Wait, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, and I would hit the y axis. Where? Bingo, right there, right? Now, that's not on the graph, but we figured it out what it would be. So the B value for that line would have been 2. So it's 1x or x plus 2. All right, so sometimes you're going to have to figure out what the y-intercept would have been based on your slope. All right, your assignment is on to worksheet 2AB. Before you do that, though, I want to show you something. I'm going to make up one that might be like something in your book. Uh, I'm just absolutely making up something. So, um, I'm going to change that. You don't have to write this down. I'm just making up a problem. Uh, I'm going to do something nice. Um, okay, so this is triple, three pieces. Okay, so let me show you how it's not all that horrible to do. I see my boundary number. I got negative one and there's something to do with the three. Okay. So I'm going to go over to negative 1. Negative 1, I would put in values in here. If I put in negative 1, I get negative 2. But that's not including it. I put the arrow in the wrong direction. I need to put this left to the less than. Okay. So if it was less than, then it's going to be numbers that are smaller than negative 1. 
negative 1, negative 2 would be an open hole here. And then I'd put in, say, negative 2, and I'd get negative 3. And that would be the piece of the line over to the left. Okay, now, what does this mean? What's a line y equals 3 look like? You need to remember that's a horizontal line. So it's just a chunk of a horizontal line. So between negative 1 and positive 3, you have a horizontal line, and it's at 3. So that would be negative 1, 3, 0, 3, blah, blah, blah. You just keep going till you get to 3. So it would be a chunk of line like that. And then at 3, you jump to this line. So you'd have to do another T-chart. So you'd put in 3 here, which would be 7. Oh, my gosh. I made it too big. <laughs> All right. So then it would jump up here, and it would be an open hole, and it'd go up to right one, and it'd be this chunk of line going that way. Does it make some sense, I hope? It's just three pieces. So if you see one that has three pieces, that's what you're going to get, three pieces. That's all, folks. We're going to give it a try now. All right, so again, worksheet 2AB. Um, there's a book page on the back. I posted the PDF on the Google Classroom of the book.